the Liberal Party claims intellectual superiority. Sometimes it's very difficult to see. Welcome to another episode of Both Sides of the Aisle. In this episode, we see Minister Suds put her entire foot in her mouth. Let's check it out. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this NDP Liberal government, this Prime Minister is not worth the cost of Christmas dinner. His carbon tax are driving up the costs so high that Canadian households are struggling as we head into the holiday season. But what's worse is that he's planning to quadruple this tax on groceries, gas and home heating. Instead, Mr. Speaker, why doesn't the Prime Minister axe his carbon tax so that Canadians can afford Christmas dinner? The Honourable Minister for Families, Employment. Mr. Speaker, in a shocking turn of events just last week, the Conservative Party held hostage the progress and investments that we continue to make in Canadians. When given the chance to support increasing the number of childcare spaces in rural and underserved communities, what did they do, Mr. Speaker? They voted against. What does this mean? This means not supporting new needed child care spaces in rural and underserved communities, Mr. Speaker, they are just not worth the risk. Okay, so before I get into how egregiously ridiculous what that woman just said, uh, Minister Suds just said, I want to explain a couple things to you. The um, NDP liberal axis does not need the Conservatives to pass any legislation at all. That's what the whole entire um, entente is about, right? Like that's what it's all about. They join each other and that way they're nothing that the liberals want to have happen. It's like a de facto majority. Now you hear the word majority, you might not appreciate what it is. So there are 338 seats in the House of Commons, 337 of them are currently occupied. That's for now. This year, come the next election, there'll be uh, 343, I think. They've expanded it because of population. However, currently, to achieve a majority, you need 170 votes into the yay column. Once you have 170 people in the House of Commons that are giving you yay, there's nothing that the rest of them all put together can do. No matter what party they represent, nothing. Now, the Liberals have 158. The NDP has 125. And for those of you keeping score, not, excuse me, not 125. Again, the Liberals have 158 and the NDP have 25. So for those of you keeping score, that's 183 votes, which means that at any given time, they can have 13 people not show up for a vote and still pass any legislation they want, whether it be for rural communities, whether it be for carbon taxes, whether it be for whatever it is. So remember that when you hear about the carbon tax, the, the NDP and the Bloc Québécois are partially responsible for this crushing tax. But it doesn't matter that the liberal, that the conservatives held up the, it's not that the conservatives voted against it. That's the problem, right? It's that they kept them in the building for too long and they had to go, you know, order takeout or whatever it is. It was a minor inconvenience that rather than attack the question, rather than attack, attack the liberal policies, what they're trying to do is manipulate that by wording it into 30 second or 60 second TikTok videos that make it seem like the conservatives are out to get all single mothers, right? Rural and underserved daycare spaces. So then all of a sudden the women who should be voting for the conservatives are convinced that they need to vote for the liberals or they won't get free daycare. Even though the conservative party is historically the party that cares more about families. So, I mean, there's a lot of there that doesn't add up, right? But that's not my, the point that I'm trying to make. The point that I am trying to make is that the Liberal Party stands up and says that the Conservatives tried to block a vote and they voted against this vote that the, the Liberal Party doesn't even need the Conservatives to vote for. They have the NDP. They have some of the Bloc, depending on what day of the week the Bloc, you know, but you can, the Bloc is for sale because the Bloc just wants to destroy Canada and they don't care what happens. So <clears throat> this individual, MP Suds, stands up and says, oh, what about the rural and underserved, marginalized communities? Well, you've been in power a decade. Why are there still underserved 
communities? Why are the liberal policies such that they are serving brand new communities that are coming across the border that don't have any children at all, that don't even have any women at all, and leaving Canadians who need daycare as underserved? Why, after 10 years, have you not taken care of it? I mean, there were people when you took, a, a, um, when you took the reins of government who just had a brand new baby who needed a daycare space, and that child is now in grade six and you still haven't gotten to their underserved community. Also, and this is like another, it's a, just as big. You know what people that live in rural communities need? Cheap gas and cheap, inexpensive food. But your carbon tax is crushing them. Your carbon tax is making the cost of their fuel through the roof. That Your carbon tax is making the cost of their groceries through the roof. Because the further you come from the, the transfer points, the more expensive food gets. So you make it in one spot, then you, uh, you like so you grow it in a spot. Let's just call it, we won't even talk about like, the cookies and all that stuff. We'll just talk about natural foods, right? You grow your peas, you put them in the truck, the truck goes to the factory, the factory puts them in a the can, the can goes to the store, to the warehousing which are laid out geographically, but all along the southern part of the, of the Canada, because that's where the roads and the truck routes are. Then you put it in other trucks and you drive it into the rural and underserved areas, where now companies are adding 14 cents per liter to the cost of that uh, can of peas or that bag of carrots or whatever it happens to be. So up northern Canada, what they need more than they, they need you putting on theatrics and drama in the House of Parliament is answers to the carbon tax. Maybe they could save enough money on their groceries and gas bill that they could afford to pay a sitter. Maybe they could afford to do a lot of things if you weren't crushing them with these hidden and uh, t these hidden taxes that are uh, stripping them of all of their extra money, stripping them of all of their savings and making their life very, very, very difficult. It doesn't matter what you want to talk about, how, you know, daycare and all the rest of that. When the child gets home from the daycare and his mother's stressed out because she doesn't have any food to give him because she had to spend it all on gas. Or what she likes to buy she can't afford because she had to buy it all for his lunch. And now they're, they're both skipping meals so that they can not go to school without any food in their, in their lunchbox and breakfast to get them out the door. Well, she has nothing but coffee for three days. No milk, because that's, you know, through the roof. I think Minister Suds needs to reevaluate the kind of uh, pre-approved pre statements that she gets handed to her. She should screen them a little bit. She should have a look at what they actually mean and the implications that they actually have. Because it doesn't matter what the conservatives voted for, they are um, not in the majority. So they can't really stop the liberal NDP axis from doing anything they want. However, the liberal NDP axis can stop the carbon tax. They can stop this inflationary tactic that is draining all of the money off hardworking, normal, everyday, average, common people. All right, I just want to leave that one there. I want to thank you for listening. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, tell your friends. I'll talk to you next time.